At the end of the day, it's genetic diversity that underpins agriculture today. If we didn't have a lot of different varieties, if we didn't have a lot of different crops, uh, each one adapted to a different niche around the world, we wouldn't have agriculture. So it is also this genetic diversity which is underpinning the agriculture of the future. So if we've got climate change, we've got growing populations, we were going to have new pests and diseases coming along and so on, this will require a response from agriculture to, to come up with new varieties, new, new crops that can meet these new challenges. And it's genetic diversity that underpins all that. Without that, we can't breed new varieties, we can't develop the sort of crops that we're, we're going to need in the future. And the problem is that that diversity is being lost. Some of it has already been lost, a bunch of it has already been lost, and, and a lot of it is still under threat. As I see it, the trust has an absolutely vital role to play in, in, in preserving this resource, essentially, in, in helping collect it and helping maintain it, in, uh, particularly in gene banks. And why in gene banks? Obviously, you want to conserve this stuff in the field where it's being used by the farmers themselves. But if you want to breed varieties, if you want to, to produce new ones, you need to know what you've got. You need to have access to the material. You need to be able to, to, to send off and get material in the time you need it in order to be able to, to, to work on it scientifically and develop these, the, the, the new materials. So by underpinning that process, uh, the Trust is absolutely making a major contribution to, to feeding the world in the future.